Hi all, Nathan Hunter from e-commerce and covered.com. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, backlinking for e-commerce and what we do from an SEO perspective and I guess why we do it. Uh, it's uh, SEO, obviously, I, gee, and it's a hard thing to talk about. I mean, there's so much rubbish online and, um, and not only is there rubbish, but there's actually a lot of really, really good stuff that's just not applicable to what we do. And that's really hard to, to differentiate. Um, I was actually talking to a, a, a new friend of mine recently about, you know, the idea that, for example, on an information-based website, you often read people say, hey, you only want 1% to 2% keyword density. In other words, the keyword that you're targeting, you're trying to rank for, you only want, you know, sort of 1% to 2% throughout the body of the text of that actually being that keyword. Uh, whereas with e-commerce, you know, you've obviously, you, your keywords are part of your product, that you, you can have product pages that got 30%, 40% keyword density. And you know what? You can, you can rank no problems with that kind of keyword density. Why? Because Google knows the difference between an e-commerce site and an information page site. Um, it, it's kind of ridiculous to, as, to say that Google doesn't know the difference. Of course it does. That's why when you type in product searches, you'll usually, usually get uh, e-commerce stores. But if you're typing in the information-based phrase, you might get uh, information pages. So clearly, not, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to SEO um, based on specific keywords that you might put in. Uh, in our case, we're talking about e-commerce. So what do we do and why do we do it? Well, from obviously this on-page stuff, today we're going to talk a little bit about the off-page stuff, and that's really about getting other sites to link to your site. Uh, how do you do it? And what are you looking for? A bit of the background is, is many years ago, we, I uh, used to play a lot around with the, I guess, the, the dark side of the force, the black hat uh, side of things. And, and one year I got uh, very, I guess, frustrated about trying to figure out what actually worked, what would work just for a while before getting spanked and what would actually work uh, indefinitely. And we did a whole series of experiments. And, and one of the things that did work for us is something called the private blog network and that's where you go out and you, you kind of buy uh, highly trusted or authoritative domains uh, from old websites, maybe from companies that have gone bust or something like that. And then you put your own content on there and they link back to your own site. So it's kind of like you've got a link on this, you know, trusted site um, and that helps you rank. And that's one of the things that actually really worked well for us. Uh, and, to, and actually, they still work today. Uh, you'll see a lot of, you see some sites saying they don't work anymore, but they, don't, they do actually still work. And again, they've got to be set up correctly. Even though they still work, uh, we're not actually using them so much anymore. And it's purely from the perspective of, uh, we don't need to, and I'll tell you why, and that is, we've found ways of replicating, doing exactly the same thing, uh, just doing it in a way that is a little bit more Google friendly. I, with the black hat versus white hat, uh, we've, again, I say used to use it in the past, but we used to get spanked in the past as well. In other words, we'd get kicked out of Google or we'd lose rankings. And, and, and what we really found, though, is, is much of the value that you're creating when, you, when you're trying to do SEO is actually, it, it, think of it kind of like it's a property investment. You know, you've got, once you have that, uh, that, that position or that ranking for that keyword, if you've done it legitimately and you've got all these amazing sort of uh, white hat links coming to your site that Google is perfectly happy with, then that's what creates value in your site. That's, that's a big part of what creates value in your store and makes your business worth something. And uh, so we really wanted to, to try to find ways of doing it that's not really, I guess, gaming Google. Some people might still say that you kind of are, and there's so many different arguments I, I just don't want to get into. Um, but going back to what we're talking about with the blog network, is if you've got authoritative sites and you're creating those little blogs on there that actually link back to your site, then why can't you do that from the perspective of just finding relevant sometimes or just highly trusted sites that Google likes to actually just give you the same sort of link? So the kind of link we're looking for is an in-content, permanent, relevant, 
link back to your site. Um, basically, there are two things that you're looking for when you're trying to rank a site, or maybe the Google you might say is looking for. One is uh, trust or authority, and the other one's relevance. So when we get backlinks, we're doing the same thing. We're looking for authority and or relevance. So one way to, to check out uh, what the authority of the site is, is we look at the domain authority in particular. So if you just if you look up domain authority, you'll come up with a bunch of sites that'll tell you what the domain authority of, of any site you want is just by putting in the URL. Uh, it all comes back from moz.org. Uh, if you go to opensiteexplorer.org, you can just put in any URL you want, any website address, and it'll tell you what the, the domain authority is, or DA. It's a score out of 100. And we that's probably one of the primary metrics we're looking at. So your ideal backlink would be on a blog post um, that's on a site that is, is relevant to your particular niche and also has high authority. So why a blog post or a news feed? We like to look for the blog posts or news feeds because generally those links will stay on the site and just go into an archive somewhere. And that just simply means that your link will always be on that site pointing back to yours. And in fact, over time, the particular page that your link is on will gain and gain more uh, authority and page authority from that site. And in fact, your backlink will become more and more powerful as time goes by. So it's really important to make sure it's permanent. One of the only ways we've found to do that is to get it done in a blog post. So that's why we, we look for blog posts and news feeds. The authority side of things, uh, again, that's about trust. It's telling Google that you know if, if this particular trusted site is willing to link to yours, then uh, there must be a certain amount of trust there. If it's relevant as well, that's perfect. In fact, we'll, we'll accept a lot lower domain authority. In other words, in fact, we'll go as, as low as 20. If, there's, if a site is actually relevant to your niche, uh, then we'll take, you know, we'll still need it to have at least a, a DA of 20 or, or more before we go after it and waste the time going after it because these things do take time. Uh, but if it's not necessarily relevant, like, I don't know, maybe it's a, a newspaper article or you manage to, to find uh, an e-commerce site and they've done a case study on yours, so, you know, you might be selling, I don't know, steak knives or something and that e-commerce site's not at all relevant to steak knives, but maybe it's got a domain authority of you know, 40, 45, or 50. Uh, in other words, it's not really going to pass any relevance as such, but it will pass authority. So if it's got no relevance, we kind of still want, we probably want the DA to be at least 35 or 40 plus, uh, otherwise not worth it. Again, it has to be permanent, otherwise, again, not worth it. So that's the style of backlink that we're looking for. Uh, it's actually fairly simple. Uh, we go after this day in and day out. Again, there are lots of different ways to think outside the box on this one. I know people that have become basically regular journalists and in sort of online newspapers and things and they're just doing it because they want the authority. They know it's not necessarily relevant to their niche, but they know that every time they get the chance to mention their site, they're getting that authority. Uh, and that's usually what you end up doing after a while because sometimes, depending on what you're selling, sometimes there's not really that, much, that many sites out there that are actually relevant to it. Uh, if you're lucky, you, you might, you know, if you've got a fashion sort of product, there's obviously almost unlimited fashion sites out there with blogs and news feeds that you can approach. How you approach them is uh, really another whole video altogether. In this particular video, all I wanted to cover is the type of link that you're looking for. It's so easy to waste time and effort on links that aren't going to do anything for you, uh, particularly if they're not permanent or they're not in content or they've got low DAs, no authority, maybe not much relevance either. And oh, the other thing that we avoid is guest posts. We generally go for sites that will actually give their own voice uh, and there are ways to do that, particularly with product niche. But uh, we might save that for another video. Thanks very much.